What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. In today's video for the getting started with Meshtastic series, we're going to close out the series with some frequently asked questions. So join me as we dig into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. So this frequently asked question video is just going to cover questions that have been asked on my videos and questions I see online that didn't get covered in this series. And Meshtastic also has a page in the docs on their website that is also worth looking over. And I'll include a link to that in the video description. So let's jump right into the first question. And that's, do you need cell service to use Meshtastic? The answer to this is no. Meshtastic is completely off-grid and works independently of the cell phone towers. And the standard setup, your phone connects to the LoRa device via Bluetooth. And when you send a message from the app, the message gets sent to the LoRa device over Bluetooth. And then the LoRa device's radio sends that message over the radio waves. And the recipient's LoRa radio will pick that up and then send it to their phone via Bluetooth. And then the message will appear on the app. The next question, is there a map of other users or devices to see who's near me? There's currently a few options for this. The first one isn't a live map, but a map of users who have connected to the public MQTT server at some point. And we'll get into MQTT in the advanced series, but looking through this map, you can select the pins and see the last time the device connected to the public MQTT server. The next option also isn't a live map, but this map is self-reported. So basically, if you've put up a device, you can go onto this map and report it yourself to make others aware. You have options to let others know what type of setup you have, like mobile, fixed, fixed and powered, fixed and internet gateway. And if you have multiple nodes up, you can show that with the fixed node links. And we can see an example of this in Beckley, West Virginia here. To place your node on the map, simply click on the area of the map where it's located and select the type of node. For this example, I'll select fixed and powered. Then you can provide whatever info you want for the node, antenna's height, power source, frequency, and QR code. And these are all optional, so provide whatever information you want. Then you would hit save, but since this is just a demo, I'm just, I'll hit delete here. Next question on the list is, can you use Meshtastic for voice comms? The answer to this is kind of. Voice comms is currently experimental and only supported on the 2.4 gigahertz radios, and there's only one that's currently supported. And this is also not handled by the Meshtastic app itself, so you would have to add a microphone, speaker, and push to talk button to the LoRa radio itself to, to do this. And the reason only 2.4 gigahertz is supported is that the lower bands, like 915 megahertz and below, do not have enough bandwidth to support voice communications. Next up we have, can you send pictures or videos with Meshtastic? Due to the bandwidth limits I just mentioned, you're not able to send pictures or videos using LoRa radios. In order to get the long distance communications capability of LoRa, LoRa sacrifices bandwidth for increased range. So it sacrifices the data speed in favor of signal range, and because of this, it's only feasible to send text-based data, as pictures and videos would take ages to, to send with the limited bandwidth available. Next up we have, what sort of range can you get with Meshtastic? This depends heavily on the terrain at your location, types of antennas being used, and placement of the device. If you head over to the Meshtastic docs page, they have a section with the current range record, which as of the making of this video is 158 miles. This of course won't be the typical range you'll get, and this was done from mountaintop to mountaintop, so your range will, will vary. But generally speaking, the higher up your device, the more range you'll get. Next up we have, can I use these devices standalone without having a phone paired to them? You can use Meshtastic standalone, and there's devices like the T-Deck with the keyboard that allow you to type out messages that you want to send. You can also add things like a rotary knob to devices that don't have a keyboard and set up a number of canned messages to, to send as well. And we'll go more into canned messages in the advanced series, so be sure to stay tuned for that. 
But for now though, feel free to check out the video I did on the T-Deck that shows the standalone device usage. And I'll include a link to that in the video description as well. Another question I see on occasion is, can multiple people be connected to a single LoRa radio over Bluetooth? That's not possible with the current implementation, so each user would need their own LoRa device. There is potential for this to change in version 3.0, but for the moment this isn't possible with the current version. Next question is, what is the battery life of these devices? That'll depend on the size of battery and the type of device you're using and how much you're using it. As mentioned in previous videos, the devices that use the NRF52 microcontroller are going to have much better battery life than ESP32 based devices. For comparison, a single 2600 milliamp hour 18650 battery on the WizBlock, which uses the NRF52 microcontroller, has gotten me about a week and a half of use. That same battery in a T-Beam, which uses the ESP32 microcontroller, will only last about a day or so. That'll do it for this video and series, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and join me for the next Meshtastic series where we'll get into some of the more advanced topics and usage of Meshtastic. Hope to see you there. Thank you all, and have a good one. Just want to give a quick shout out to the channel's recent supporters. Your support is very much appreciated, and if you're finding these videos useful and would like to support the channel as well, you can do so by using the coffee link in the video description or by using the thanks button below the video. Thank you for your support and helping with the channel's continued production.